Madam President, accepting the outcome of an election is an integral part of the electoral process. The losing candidate, former President John Dramani Mahama, and his officials have rejected the outcome of the poll, expressing concern about setting figures. How do you think this process should move forward? Of course, the Electoral Commission or Electoral Laws have a way of addressing them. As a former politician yourself, a stateswoman as well, how do you think this process should move forward in terms of addressing their concerns in the run-up to the former installation of the second term of Nanado Dankwa Akufuadu, president-elect of Ghana? Well, let's first say um, one has a right to question any doubts that one has about election results, particularly if you're a candidate, you have that right. Ghana has established mechanisms to address questions and concerns about the results of the election. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition, we would like to note that uh, the National Peace Council is an established mechanism for dialogue. So I would expect that, you know, uh, if uh, it's challenged, you know, by the one who lost the election, if it's challenged legally is one thing. I also expect that um, it will be accorded by the Peace Council the opportunity for dialogue uh, to ensure that uh, there's satisfactory answers to those questions. And I believe there will be, mm -hmm. you know, it will be properly addressed. And at the end of the day, I think you will see the two sides coming together, not only in parliament, you know, where they're just about have equal strength in terms of their numbers, mm -hmm. but also coming together for the common agenda of the development and prosperity of Ghana. Mm. Madam President, you know, as you went around, I, I'm sure you interacted with some of the poll officials. Some people mm. say Ghanaians have a high expectations of transparency and credibility of the elections. How will you assess how the elections were organized in terms of its transparency and credibility? Look, everything we saw about the process accorded transparency to it. The votes were cast in open spaces where everyone could see how the vote was done. Um, and it was not just polling officers or voters or party agents or security. It was also watched by ordinary citizens. As long as they preserved the distancing, they could watch the process. That's as transparent as it could be. And so, if there were any infractions, I think those were quickly addressed. One or two of them were reported, but they were quickly addressed, either by security, if, if it meant something that had to do with the use of force mm -hmm. or illegal use of, of something. Um, and it was just something where an honest error here and there, I think it was adjusted. So mm. let, let's, let's, let's give Ghana what, and the Ghana citizens what they deserve. That first of all, their attitude toward a peaceful election is so appealing, is so applaudable. You know, their participation in the vote uh, with the demeanor of casting their vote and moving away quickly is something that is exemplary. The professionalism of all of those at the polling places is once again something to be applauded. Mm. And so I think we should just say to Ghana, thank you for being a model for election Thank you for this tradition, you know, that is now long-standing peaceful transfer of power through a transparent, free, fair election process. Let's accord Ghana what they deserve. Let's applaud them. 
They deserve it. Mm. They're Ghana citizens. Mm. 